Japanese officials say 60,000 tons of radioactive water have accumulated in the basement of the stricken Fukushima power plant. Workers must keep feeding water into the reactors to stop them from overheating, which of course is leading to a buildup of radioactive fluid. Now, Japan has asked Russia to send a waste disposal facility to the crippled nuclear station. Almost 12,000 tons of low-tainted water are being released into the ocean to free storage uh, space for more highly contaminated waste. Authorities say this poses no threat to human health or the environment. Let's, let's get some more details on this now as we're joined by nuclear industry expert uh, Arnold Gunderson. So as, as we just heard, almost uh, 12,000 tons of radioactive water dumped into the Pacific and, and continuing to be dumped. Uh, the government saying this won't pose a threat to people or the environment. Um, is, that, uh, is that accurate? Um, I, I disagree. I mean, they had no choice, but the uh, radiation they're releasing into the water will get absorbed by the fish. And uh, I'm sure they'll be quarantined uh, fishing within the, within the area to prevent um, the human consumption. Well, when you talk about uh, the nuclear waste being absorbed by, uh, by marine life there in the Pacific, uh, let, let, let's talk about the Pacific concerns here, because um, if nuclear waste gets into the global oceanic currents, what are the worldwide implications that all should be aware of? Well, you know, it's called bioaccumulation, and, and what will happen is the, um, the, the radioactivity they're releasing is going to be absorbed by the ground and then the, the grasses and then the little fish and the bigger fish. Um, so um, as you get up the food chain, those fish swim much further. Um, so, you know, you could be hundreds of miles away from Fukushima and, uh, and catch a fish that was, uh, that, that was feeding at, the, at Fukushima. So I, I, I don't see it uh, extending across the Pacific now, but certainly up and down the coast of Japan, uh, it should be a concern. All right, now let's, uh, let's talk about the uh, cleanup issues going on here. Uh, Japan has asked for Russia's assistance in disposing of radioactive waste with a special uh, type of floating facility. It sounds like Russia could play a, a crucial role amid this, di uh, this disaster. I think so. You know, the, the problem is that um, the, the amount of water is so astronomical and it's so tainted that as they begin to clean the water, they're going to get the filters will become so radioactive, it will be very difficult to approach the filters. So, um, you know, the problem becomes one of um, um, keeping it in tanks and this stuff will stay radioactive for 300 years. So they're between a rock and a hard place and it's hard to know that the uh, that the Russians have that capability to uh, to to clean this water, but it, it's still not going to be easy. So, uh, uh, at uh, what point does it stop, though? So we have we have the um, the contamination effect uh, knocking on the food chain. Uh, then we have the contamination effect on the filters, as you were saying, of this uh, disposal facility. At what point does it stop? That's a great question. They um, the containment, especially on Unit Two is leaking and they have to pump water into the reactor to cool it but it's running out the bottom of the reactor into these trenches uh, some estimates say they're pumping in as much as 50 tons a day and and 50 tons is therefore coming out i don't know of any processing unit that can handle 50 tons a day of radioactive material which means that we haven't seen the end of releasing into the ocean um, there will be you know, no alternative because the, they have to keep that cool, that, that reactor core cool. All right, now let's, uh, let's talk about this, um, th th this issue of having a Russian disposal facility because the, I mean, one of the questions is that Japan has a vast use of nuclear energy. Why doesn't it have one of these uh, disposal facilities already at hand? Um, we're out in engineering space that no one in the West ever imagined occurring. You know, this, this is uh, well beyond what used to be called a design basis accident. And um, um, we just didn't anticipate it. I, I'm not sure that the Russian barge was designed for this, but that it's available and, uh, and has the capability is, uh, is, is certainly a wonderful international feature. Arnold Gunderson, a nuclear industry expert. Thank you.